Okay, hello everyone. I'm the research director at uh, BAD, built by Associative Data. Um, today we're going to be presenting the Tower of Life, which is a project in, in Diemnidio in Africa. And uh, we're going to be talking about all the other parts of it. The, the, 20th, um, the, the 20th century of science has been largely um, an era of chemistry uh, and physics. But the 21st century is going to be largely an area of biology an era where we will understand better how living ecosystems happen, learn how to manage local resources, manage organisms, and so on. And finally, lead that through, through design of the ecological era. Architects, planners, and designers today, we, face a fork in the road with two choices. We either go ahead and continue designing and building the industrial age more modern cities of concrete, steel, and glass, or we decide to make a shift, a shift towards designing the ecological, the ecological era. We choose, we choose this challenge. We choose the challenging alternative of building this. It's a way to build incub incubation for this. It's a way to celebrate life and, and go accordingly. And that's why we believe that this building is the architectural icon of the ecological era, which is how we're defining this. The information era has had its own icons, had its own challenges and its own ways of practice to respond to. Following different ones, following the shift that we are proposing, we are proposing the Tower of Life as the icon of this. It's the icon of the ecological era. This is because it defines the metrics of why, how, why, how, and what architecture can perform and can do amidst the planetary scale climate crisis. A crisis that we choose to respond to at the scale of the city, at the scale of the building, and at the scale of the community. It's a building that, from the inside out, is based on biological systems, but finally it's wrapped with a printed earth membrane. This is just to show how the building form and skin are attached. They are one thing, they are hybrid, and then how the spaces are complementary between the inside and the outside. The building has at its core systems to move air, air water, uh, things, and people. And then the way it works, it operates as a living system. That's only because it deploys a, a value-led uh, design, design, design system. One where ecology, biocomputation, material science, decentralized economies, and new forms of knowledge, as well as sustainable developments are implemented. At the social level, we understand this project with, with, with the input it has. This is a project that by deploying not only resource as material, but knowledge and culture, is a context-specific landmark ecological machine. And that's how we're presenting this. Not only in terms of the social aspect, but as well the formal aspect, because through, through, through understanding the history of the local architecture and the African patterns and forms, this is a way to re-understand the new vernacular. We are positioning this project at the forefront of the African form, formal genealogy. And therefore, at the end of this, through it, we're doing the new vernacular of Africa. As we know, clay is the most abundant material on planet Earth. And dealing with clay as a building material dates back to millennia. That's why what we, what we chose for this building is not only to build it in that form, but as well to use on-site robotics which is a new and efficient way of using old systems and old materials, but as well augment them towards doing new things. And that's again, not only by using that for the material resource, but as well for knowledge and for society, because this will create new forms of knowledge, new know-how and new economies. As you might have guessed already, the building follows a biomimicry way of doing things. We look at living organisms very broadly in, in, in nature and look at the patterns and, and how skins are. This tower, this skin of the tower was made, uh, the pattern for, for the mass void was made using the reaction diffusion algorithm, which, an, which is an algorithm that is inspired by all these animals, skins, and biology at various, la at various scales. And here you can see at the end is the skin tower, the skin of the tower, following the genealogy of all the skins that we see before. As we, as we explained, we use on-site robotics that takes this to the second scale. So on the one hand, we have the natural algorithm for the geometry. We have the old material and know-how, and we bring in new technologies and new ways of doing it. We build it through on-site robotics that are implemented as part of the building. And then 
are carried out through, throughout its life, mm. throughout its lifetime. And that's how we see the biomimicry, not only from the inside, but to the facade as well. This is the holistic approach that we're following. Through the, through the diversification of users, functions, revenue streams, and in general how the building works, we make sure that what we're designing is a way that recruits local resources uh, to sustain foster economies as well as create ecosystems. And that goes back to the first slide where we, through biology, understand how to control and manage all these living organisms. This is an ecosystem where materials, energy, uh, biodiversity, information from the other area about new economies and knowledge are not only consumed, such as uh, the industrial age buildings and cities, but also generated. Building on all that that we mentioned already, this, these are the features that we put forward and design according to create the mixed use tower of tomorrow. I will walk you through some of the special functions this tower has that are very different from other buildings. Here we see a seed bank of African flora. We see the deforestation in Africa and the problem of the ecological context. Through self-assembling through self -assembling drones, we can deploy seed bombs and regenerate the forest. Aerial robotics are not active through ecology as well, but society and culture, where they can do disaster relief, vaccine distribution, crisis mitigation, and as well map all the surrounding for extra info and extra data, which we have on the top floor of the tower, but as well create performance arts and perform culturally. The tower has at its bottom, where you see down there, the Museum for the Future Economy of Africa, the economy that exactly we're proposing there. This is a building that is a catalyst in its place, and that's why we're compressing all these functions within it. The museum is lit by this by this ground of pattern of, of solar panels, and that's how we organize them following the same pattern we use on the skin. This, this is a little way of putting them as well, help us get more light into the museum. And finally, a sensing layer that help us collect and react with data full circle. Here we get information from ecological data, logistical data, and, and, and geospatial information. I will wrap up very fast. This is, a, this is a tower, this is a project that actually understands economy and ecology as one thing, as inseparable, and design, designs according to them being one single hybrid entity. As we see here, this is the microforest. The microforest is at the 39th floor, and then invites and celebrates the Afri African flora through that. I'll keep you with some renders before we wrap up this. But as you know, and as we believe at the office, the best way to predict the future is to create it. And through this project, we, not, we don't only create a project, but we create a new way of doing buildings in the world and a new way of dealing with the ecological challenge. I'll keep you with this video. Thank you very much.